This is Night School at InternetBusinessBeginners.com. Tonight we're actually going to cover hosting basics. Uh, it's the fundamentals of hosting, you know, what a host is, what they do, and generally just how hosting works. So what you need to do is understand some of the basics of how the web itself works in order to really understand what a host is and what they do. So let's start with some fundamentals here. Let's say that this is your computer. Now, when you go out onto the internet, you, um, you just simply make a request for some website. Let's say internetbusinessbeginners.com. You send out your request and it goes out to the web. Well, there's a little bit more involved in it than this. What's actually happening is it's going from your computer to a server. Uh, the, the web as a whole is a conglomeration of servers all coming together. Uh, so once you go out to the server, you make your request and the server sends out the web page. Well, again, it's an oversimplification of this. What actually happens is when you go out to the server and you make a request, the server creates or returns back to you uh, an HTML document. Now HTML is just a text document. It's, it's filled with a bunch of code that uh, lays out the web page, um, including all of the text that's on the web page, every picture, every object, everything. So what needs to happen once the web page has come to your computer before it can display anything is it needs to pull down the, you know, say the flash graphics or the, uh, the, the movies or images or audio or really it could be just about anything. And each one of these is done as a separate request. So your computer, your web browser goes right through the HTML document and looks for specific things to request. And each time it finds something, it makes a request and that gets pulled back to your computer. It happens for every single item on the web page. Once it's all come back, it renders the web page out to, uh, to look all beautiful for you, and suddenly you have your web page sitting right there on your computer. Now, the web, or the World Wide Web, as it is a bit archaically called, is actually comprised of a number of different services. Um, there's Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and this is what actually goes out and gets the text document, the HTML document. There's Domain Name Services, and this is what uh, takes a domain like internetbusinessbeginners.com and translates it into an IP address, which is where your server is actually located on the internet. Uh, there's File Transfer Protocol, and this is how you would take, as a web developer, uh, your images, your audio, your flash, and push it up onto a server. And then related to that is the email side of things. And uh, emails being sent out all use uh, the simple mail transfer protocol. Um, and then when you want to retrieve them from the server, you have actually a few options. Uh, the most common ones are uh, Internet Messaging Access Protocol um, and Post Office Protocol version 3. Uh, now, all of these services can be run either plain or encrypted. And if you use a, an encrypted uh, form of communication, what actually happens is between your computer and the server, you end up with a secure channel. And this all is handled through the Secure Sockets layer, or SSL. Now, there, everything is all powered by web servers, ultimately. Um, now, there's different types of web servers, and um, there's an overloading of the term server. Um, each of the services that I described in the previous slide are actually uh, called servers. Now, they can run on top of a piece of hardware called a server, or they can run in a virtualized environment. Um, they can come from all sorts of different servers, or they can all be on a single machine. The point is, it's all web servers, and there's basically two main types of web servers. Um, the first is Linux, and the second is Windows. Now, that's not to say that there aren't others out there, but these are the two most common ones that you'll run across, 
and uh, there's a number of pros and cons to each. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. With a Windows Server, um, you have uh, you know a number of features that are specific to Windows. For example, it will run ASP.NET and PHP. In addition to that, it will also store data in the Microsoft SQL Server or the MySQL Server. It runs a, a web server, the HTTP server, is called Internet Information Services, or IIS. The DNS system is actually faster on a Windows Server than it is on a Linux Server. Linux uses a system called Bind. Um, Windows uses a system called Active Directory. Active Directory actually pushes the information out significantly faster than Bind does. Uh, administration is done using Remote Desktop. Um, it's a system that allows you to uh, take your desktop on your computer and attach it directly to the server and you end up with uh, a beautiful connection directly into the server as though it was on your desktop right there. The downside is it tends to be a little bit more per month than a Linux machine. Um, and that's regardless of what you do. If you're just going with a basic web server system, you'll find that it's a little bit more, a few dollars more per month. If you're going with a, a virtual private server, again, you'll find it's a few dollars more. If you're going with a dedicated server, again, you'll find it's a few dollars more. And the reason for that is uh, Microsoft Windows and all the software that's associated with it has uh, licensing fees. Uh, where most of the software that runs on Linux doesn't. So moving forward, if we take a look at the Linux features, Linux is actually, um, it runs a little bit less of the, of the features than what Windows does. Um, it doesn't run uh, ASP.NET, it runs PHP. It will also run Perl, but this is really done as a concession. Windows will run Perl as well. It uses MySQL. And you'll find that's almost exclusively. There are several other databases that are available, but it will not run Microsoft SQL Server. It runs using a web server called Apache rather than IIS. And your access is over Secure Shell. Um, this is a terminal-based system, so you have to be comfortable typing um, terminal commands or using an FTP uh, application. The, uh, the other nice feature of it is generally administration is done using a system called cPanel, which is a web-based interface. So if you want to add new domains, you want to upload new files, you want to do all sorts of things to your um, system, you can actually do that right through a nice, friendly web interface. Um, it's a little bit easier to find virtual private server hosts um, than it is to find Windows ones. Uh, again, I think this is a cost-related thing. It's, it's a little cheaper to get into uh, VPS hosting using Linux than it is in Windows. And once again, it is a little bit less per month than Windows is. So what I really want to emphasize here with the, your first crack at this is um, go try it out. Uh, the nice thing is, is that lots of hosts actually give you discounts that essentially make your first month free. Um, if you go to internetbusinessbeginners.com and you click on the deals button, uh, you actually end up with uh, this page that comes up here, and it will show you the latest uh, coupon codes for the various hosts that we use. And um, uh, try them out. I mean, uh, Currently, as I'm recording this, there's a deal where your first month of uh, using a Linux server uh, costs you one cent. It's very, very cheap to get into this. It's something simple. Um, so take a crack at it. Um, check out internetbusinessbeginners.com for more great tips and tricks, uh, for additional uh, night school episodes, and uh, sign up for our podcast. Um, once again, internetbusinessbeginners.com. <laughs>